Hello, everybody. This is Chet Czar. Welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. Episode 149. We're almost at 150. I can't believe it. Today, I interview Jeremy Hush, who I've been wanting to get on the podcast for a long time because I'm a big fan of his work and the work he's doing in uh, the Philly art scene with the convent Philly, which we talk about. So that's a good interview and it's coming up soon. Uh, what have I been up to? Um, I've been up to no good. That's not true. I've been, let's see, what has been going on since last, okay, let's see, here's where I interviewed Mia. Uh, You know, I got kind of overwhelmed with the tool poster drop. That's what happened to me because I wanted to be, I had to, it was complicated because I, I had to release it to my Patreon people first before I went to the public but anyway the sale went amazingly well and um, very happy with how that all turned out but it really kind of kicked my ass getting ready for it and learning this new shopping cart that I'm using and blah blah all this technical stuff and I haven't even you know started doodling the posters yet that's gonna happen that's not gonna happen for another week or so and I've got other um, posters I'm doodling for couple other people who have been funneling them to me through various um, collect tool poster collectors groups so I've been busy with tool posters basically and I haven't posted on Patreon in, in like it's like a week or something since that poster drop I feel bad about that I really got to get back on my my Patreon I don't want it to, to be become that um, but uh, it's hard when you get hit with something that takes you know a few days to a week of constant attention but i'll get back on it i'll post so i got something to post today actually on there anyway uh if you want to join my patreon now that i bring it up it's patreon.com slash chet and if you want to join the podcast uh the the patreon for this podcast the Dark Art Society podcast. You go to patreon.com slash dark art society and join for as little as a dollar a month. Get the podcast a day early. Make the podcast free for everybody just by supporting for a dollar. And um, normally I would read off the new subscribers, but I don't think we have any this month. So let's get right into the five questions. Because that's all that's been going on with me, really. Uh, let's. Oh, I know one thing. I, I forgot to mention last week. If you can go to Netflix and recommend, I like Chet Czar. I like to paint monsters because we're trying to get the my documentary, the documentary about me that Mike Carell made, onto Netflix. So if enough people request it, we'll get it on there. Then everyone could see it for free. Because right now it's only on iTunes. And uh, I know a lot of people don't, you know, use iTunes. And it's available for DVD on my website, chetzar.bigcartel.com, or it's DVD on Amazon. But, you know, a lot of people don't even have DVD players anymore. So it needs to be on a streaming service that a lot of people have access to. And I think Netflix would be great. So if you can, there's a description or a a link in the description of this episode on where to um, suggest that title to Netflix. If you could do that, I would appreciate it. If everybody who listened to the podcast did that, I'm sure we would get on there. And that would be really great because we worked hard on that thing. And it came out good. It's a good good, uh, piece of work. Okay. Five question time, five question time. Uh, Monica Campbell, do you have eye stress with painting? Changing glasses, prescriptions, my eyes are getting worse and it's annoying. Oh God, do I have eye stress with painting? 
Yes. And uh, I, I've i needed glasses for probably over 10 years now, and I haven't gotten them. So I just use reading glasses that you can get in the drugstore. And that seems to work. But after long painting sessions, my eyes are just completely blurry. It's really frustrating. I hate it. But the older I get, the worse it gets. So I don't have any solutions for you. Other than, you know, they say look away every 10 minutes or every 20 minutes or something. But I've never been able to remember to do that. So anyway. Um, yeah, I have major eye strain and it sucks. I wish I had a better answer than that, but that's just all there is to it. It's annoying, yes. <laughs> My eyes are getting worse and it's annoying as well. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Michael R. Miller, if you were to illustrate it, a known fairy tale, what would it be and why? I thought about this question. And nothing comes to mind, really. Uh, I am so hung up on doing my own fairy tale, I guess, or my own reality. I've, I'm so committed to that that I can't think of another um, fairy tale or another story that is is not something that's coming from outside of my head or not. Yes, another another. Uh, myth or fairy tale that someone else has come up with. I just, uh, it's not grabbing me. I, I think, you know, until this dystopia thing is realized, I don't think I'm going to be able to really think much about anything else. That's my main goal in life. So I can't, you know, I can't even consider things like illustrating a, a fairy tale or something like that until this is out. I feel like this is my dystopia is my big thing, but who knows? Maybe it won't be maybe in five years. It'll just be like one of the things I did and I'm on to something else. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that is the case necessarily, but you just never know. Oh, I know something else. I still haven't smoked. Actually, I hit. I had one hit of a cigarette just to see how uh, how crazy it would be after just smoking on this jewel, which I haven't been smoking much on. Man, it was really strong. I can't believe I was smoking those things. Weird, what your body becomes accustomed to. I can smoke a whole cigarette now. Anyway, I feel a lot better since I quit. So I'm glad to say I'm keeping up with that. Anyway, okay, back to this. Uh, hmm. Okay, here's another one from Michael R. Miller. When you increase prices on your artworks, do you raise prices of old items to reflect the new price? Why or why not? Does the same apply to merchandise? That's a good question, actually. I, When I increase my prices, I increase them across the board, but... I do have I do feel more flexibility in old, selling older pieces as far as pricing goes. Like maybe I could fudge it and go to a, a lower price the price that it used to be at just because, you know, if it hasn't sold in that long. I don't know. I don't know why, but um that's how it feels to me, but you're really supposed to kind of raise them raise the prices across the board. And, uh, you know, I don't raise my prices that much on my, I don't raise it at all on my, most of my merchandise, but, uh, my studies I do because those are like original pieces, but prints, I don't and prints. I, I mean, I have, I have raised the prices of prints slowly, very slowly, but not like every year like with paintings I don't know why that is I'm not really sure I don't know it seems like the way that I'm doing prints and most of my artist friends are doing prints is not the old school way of doing it which is closer to like original works 
because that would mean the prices would have to be way higher for the prints. And you'd have to raise them every year, and they, you know, it'd be like seven hundred dollars for a paper print. That I don't think a lot of people in my fan base would be able to afford. So I try and keep things affordable. I try and keep the prints as more like a, a kind of a stepping stone to collecting one of a kind original works. Same with the studies as well. Okay, uh, Michael Acevedo. Have you seen any art come out of this movement that made you think, wow, this is so universally devastating and important, it will be talked about in future art history classes? If so, do you care to elaborate? If not, what do you think it would take for a piece of dark art to get that kind of reaction? Well, that's a big question, big couple of questions. I can't think of an individual piece that made me think that, but I have seen art in general in the, in the dark art movement that, that has made me think that, or, or an artist, you know, pers the person who comes to mind. I mean, of course, you've got Bekshinsky and Giger, and they probably, you know, if I thought about it, there's probably a couple in there, classics, classic Giger's, classic Bekshinsky's that that um, fit that criteria as far as kind of our scene right now that's happening. I mean, Bekczynski and Giger are sort of the godfathers of this whole thing. But as far as what's happening now, the person that comes to mind as far as, uh, I don't know, that seems to fit that for me would be Stan, Stanislav, Stan Darkart. You know him on... Um, social media is crazy ballpoint pen drawings full of pain and anguish are very powerful to me and very a big a sign of the times a sign of the way people are feeling not just Stan so uh, I kind of get that from his work I can't think of a single painting though or a single piece of artwork um, that makes me feel that way. By the way, if you hear construction sounds, the person next to us is getting a, a new roof. So it's a little noisy over here. Okay, last one. Kim Holm. I once found myself giggling like a schoolgirl while inking tiny warriors on a huge battlefield. What's the most fun or purely joyous part of the process for you? And do you make sure you do more of it? Well... I can relate to that. That reminds me of when I was a kid, how we used to draw like uh, battle scenes and you'd be making the sound of guns shooting like pew, pew, while you're drawing. That was the ultimate. Um, but right now I would say as an adult, um, you know, I... I kind of feel that way hmm. okay you're talking about what part of the process is the the most joyous part I don't I the beginnings fun probably the most fun for me coming up with the idea sketching it out getting inspired by having a really great idea that you're excited about I always when there's a when I hit upon an idea that I think is great I get this feeling this like excited, weird feeling. It's hard to describe like, oh, that, that's, I hit it. That's the thing. That's it. I got to do this. And, uh, you know, it's all f pretty fun, except there's, there's usually, you know, I think we talk, we talk about this in the, in the podcast interview with Jeremy Hush. There's usually a, a, an ugly stage a not fun stage where it's just kind of work. Uh, um, I, I just find that often the beginning and the end are, are the most fun parts of it. But I think probably the beginning stages because there's so much potential there. It's not realized yet. But once you get to a certain point, the ending is usually fun when you, when you know what you need to do to make it look really polished and great. Um, but sometimes it's like, 
it's so there that you know it needs more work to be finished, but it's there enough to for you to see it. And then you're like, ah, I don't really want to put that work in, but you do got to do it anyway. It's like, I already see it. I've already realized it. You know, now I have to do this final detailing, but I'm not as excited about it. But that's part of being a professional. You have to you have to do it anyway. So I would have to say overall, probably the beginning the beginning stage is the most fun because you haven't committed to anything yet. There's still an opportunity for it to change and ideas to happen. You know, when you're halfway through a painting or three quarters of the way through, it's hard to shift gears if you get an inspiring idea. Um, and it's more about just the working through it, doing the doing the hard work. Okay, that's it. That's five questions I have answered again, once again. So let's get on with the Jeremy Hush interview. It was a, it's a good interview. You'll enjoy it. Jeremy's work is awesome. So check it out. I hope you like it. Okay. Here it goes. What's up, Jeremy? Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, I'm good. I'm glad you're on here. I'm happy yeah, about thanks that. Yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, thanks for making the time and coming on. I'm a huge admirer of your work for a long time. Oh, thanks a lot. I mean, you've been you've been showing a long time, right? I mean, how long have you been doing the gallery uh, thing? Uh, pretty much. Uh, I've been living in Philly for about ten years, so it's uh, that's I've been showing longer than that, but that's when I started taking it serious and stuff. Oh, really? Like a, yeah, like because I used to show in like coffee shops and bars, all tattoo shops, all kinds of things. But when I moved to Philly, I started getting into the actual gallery scene and stuff. So. Yeah, because I remember, I mean, I know you from showing at like uh, uh, Think Space yep. and places like that, you know, places yeah, in yeah. LA around here and Last Rites and stuff. So that's been like 10 years doing that? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, your stuff is 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 uh, uh it's so great. It's um first thing I want to ask you before I forget is what is what is your technique? What are, what's the the media and technique you're using cuz it's like you've kind of got that old school illustration vibe which I love, you know. Um, yeah. It's like maybe watercolors are using or acrylics. Yeah. Or yeah, it's like it's like a color pencils ball, or <laughs> it's like ballpoint it's mostly like ballpoint pen and uh, watercolor, some acrylics for like some like some of the tougher colors like reds and stuff like that. Okay. But, uh, but mostly it's just uh, it's mostly drawing and watercolor. Right. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's funny. I read I read an interview with you about um, you ballpoint pens in hotel rooms. Oh, yeah. That was from my, my tour days and stuff because man. In hot- hotels all the time right i i every time i I, it didn't occur to me until reading that it's like i every time i've used a ballpoint pen in a hotel room it's like the most amazing ballpoint pen it's like it works so well it's weird right yeah there was a while where there was some (laughs) really really nice ones they just like they just wrote so well right the ball is just great (laughs) yeah what was up with that yeah yeah i I use like fancier ones now they're like archival and stuff right those things we're very archival, but like, I've still got ballpoint drawings from like high school. And stuff, you know? Oh, really? So, yeah, that are that are still alive. So it's pretty cool. So how do those hold up? How do they hold up? How does the ballpoint ink hold up from a high school drawing? Is it bleed? Does it bleed and stuff? No. Uh, uh, sometimes it'll turn a little bit brown and stuff, but like, oh. uh, a lot of them have just stayed the way they are because I use them. Uh, I like ballpoint pen because it works a lot like pencil, except it's with ink. Right. So, so you can do some good shading, and it's, it's a, uh, it's it's not like other pens where it's like you're drawing with lines. It's more you're drawing with textures. And I right. Prefer that. Yeah. So it's, I don't use like clean lines for anything. Right. Right. So yeah. 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 Like I, a good texture in there. I've always loved 
uh, drawing with ballpoint pen. I've never done it like, you know, professionally or Mm -hmm. thought, oh, I'm going to paint a piece or create a piece in ballpoint pen. But half the time when I doodle and I'm doing sketches when I'm talking on the phone or whatever, it's with a ballpoint pen. And I love it. And I always think, oh, I got to do something with ballpoint pen. And then I just <laughs> never do it. <laughs> oh, man, it's the slow way. That's for sure. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> like, like if you're doing anything of any size, it's, it's, oh, it's, I can imagine. it's the slow way. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. Like I rarely get it bigger than like 12 by 24-ish and stuff. That's yeah. pretty big for me just because it takes forever. I bet. I bet. Yeah. And your stuff's super detailed too, which, which is another thing I love about it. You have so much yeah. going on in it. Yeah, I like to hide a lot of stuff and things and like just make lots of little hidden hidden odds and ends and things to look for. Right. It keeps it interesting for me too. Yeah. So, so. And the viewer yeah. too. It's for people yeah. you know, people can find that stuff um little easter eggs and Yeah, it's awesome. So you you've been doing uh, I did I did a little bit of reading on you know a couple of interviews I read read about you cuz I don't really know anything about you personally other than your work mm-hmm. and um mutual acquaintances like steve clef and uh, oh, yeah, steve. yeah he's <laughs> awesome um yeah uh so you but i did read that you know you were you've been drawing since you were a kid right oh yeah and uh but you didn't plan on being an artist well it's professional i don't think it ever i don't think it was ever even a thought that there was like a career in art really you know, growing up yeah it was just like i always drew and stuff and like uh you know, I did a couple like art summer camps. My parents were real supportive of it and stuff, but I never thought that there was like a future in it, but I never really thought much about the future either. Mm, I guess yeah. as a kid, you know, I just kept on going. I was just burning through sketchbooks and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until like more in high school and stuff that I started thinking more about it, that there was something out there. Right. You know? Yeah. What about, uh, where'd you grow up? I grew up all over my, my dad was in the Navy, so we moved, like, everywhere, but mostly oh. in the southeast and stuff. Like, Tennessee is what I call home. Oh, stuff. okay. Uh, yeah, right on the North Carolina border. It's, like, just up in the mountains. It's the best. Oh, awesome. But, um, but, yeah, but I was born in, like, San Diego, but, like, I only lived there for, like, six months, and I've lived all over, like, Florida and Illinois and, like, all over the place and stuff. Right. But, uh, yeah, I never stayed anywhere too long. It was just constantly being relocated, which is cool. I liked it that way. Really? Yeah. Yeah, most yeah, you don't I, hear I, I, you don't hear a lot of kids saying that, that like army army brats or whatever they call them, military brats. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's but it's weird to me to hear that. Uh, I have friends that have friends from like elementary school, and I was like, I don't know anybody from like before high school, really. Really, so it's crazy. Yeah, wow, what a trip. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I was always off on my own drawing anyway. So right, <laughs> you know, it worked out. And years later, I was touring with bands, so like being on the move was just easy right interesting that's you know that's that's this is trippy okay you're like i know you're into punk you're you're Mm -hmm. you're a punk rocker yeah man um (laughs) (laughs) Um, and you know so you must know mike watt and the Minutemen. do you know the Minutemen? oh yeah you know mike watt's work the bass player from the Minutemen. oh yeah yeah okay do you know his solo album contemplating the engine room by any chance because Uh, it's a concept album yeah. about his dad it's about the Minutemen touring and he's related and he's and it's like an uh, allegory to his dad who was in the navy uh huh. tra- you know trap being a navy guy and going to different ports and how it's like uh how you're in the navy you travel all over the place and you don't you know you have to do these tours of duty and how, when you're in a punk rock band you get get in the Ford Econoline line and you do a tour of duty so yeah. it's so it tells the story of the Minutemen through this allegory like they're on a boat it's, it's really amazing <laughs> It's really cool. I just thought with the Navy thing, you know, you, the, you, you might you might like that that uh, album. Yeah, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> but, but yeah, like being on the move was always easy for me and stuff. It was, it was great. You know, I like to travel and see things and experience other things, like other places. Right. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's like the, 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 the polar opposite of me. I'm like so <laughs> not like that. Like, But I've traveled a lot I, just because of my job. You know, right. working in the movie business i traveled all over the world and so i did get that experience that i probably wouldn't have done otherwise on my own you know because i'm such a, a hermit oh, totally. I, I wouldn't have gotten out of my shell to do that but i'm so glad it happened because i mean that's how you become a well-rounded 
person yeah. is seeing how other people are and realize, you know, realize everyone's kind of the same ultimately, you know, but yeah. things are so interesting and different. And so, yeah. Yeah. And if I, you know, if I hadn't gone to college, I would have probably never gotten out of Tennessee, you know, oh, like, really? that's, that's a scary thought. Like I right. love it there, but like, you know, I, I would hate to have stayed there. Right. So right. It's just not, not for me. I love the mountains, but it's like, I got to be out and about, right. And see other things. Yeah. That's why I've, I've, I've said this before, too, because I was in a band for, you know, I tried to make it happen for like 10 years in music. And um, uh, I, I'm i glad it didn't work out for a number of reasons, be, but because I, I wasn't even considering myself a visual ar- artist at that point. So right. I kind of made me realize, oh, you've been a visual artist since you were a kid. What are you doing with this music stuff? Um, <laughs> but But I'm glad because the lifestyle, the traveling lifestyle would not be for me at all. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, like... it's weird. I have a hard time imagining doing it now because I, I haven't toured in probably like six years. Oh, stuff, really? So. so, yeah. So, you know, the the most fun was the earlier, like the punk tours, like when we were just in a shitty van, like staying at people's houses. Those were the most fun, but I was like sleeping on floors. Yeah, what a crazy lifestyle, man. Yeah, sleeping on porches and backyards. <laughs> And if you're sleeping in the backyard, it's because the house is so revolting and horrible that, like, yeah. Yeah, squats sleeping. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, God, what experience. What an amazing, oh, fun no, experience for, a, you know, a young, young man to have. Yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was amazing. That's so <laughs> you know, cool. So survived you, it. Yeah, right? <laughs> were you a, um, were you a, when did you get into to punk music? Were, were, you uh, in, were you a punker in Tennessee? I was mostly into like uh, like metal and stuff until I moved to Tennessee, like uh, in like high school. Um, that's where I actually started hanging out with punks. Was like up in the mountains, which is really strange. Yeah, that's and a trip. I, <laughs> you wouldn't think yeah, the yeah. mountains of Tennessee is where you'd find punk punk rock. Yeah, it's totally strange, and um, yeah, it's weird how it worked out. I was living in North Chicago before that, and um, everyone I was friends with were like metalheads, and mm. there was some punk bands that we listened to, but like nobody called it punk or anything like that and stuff. And until I moved to Tennessee and a lot of that stuff just translated and it's things like suicidal Tennessee is like your gateway for like oh, metalheads right. to punk and stuff right, like that. Right. And then true. like, there's all these other bands that you start listening to from that and so, just getting introduced to other things. And, uh, you know, so much of it had like a great energy to it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to say it's like crossover, but all that like thrash stuff and then punk stuff like that, you know, Metallica got me into the Misfits because they always wore Misfit shirts, right. that kind of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. It's funny how it crossed over. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's it just great. It was, uh, and it was the best because it was just the punk community is like everywhere and stuff. And you can right. travel in it really easily. And um, it can be good. It can be crappy, you know. Right. But uh, but it's, it's definitely like a whole world of its own. It's great. I wonder if it's – do you think it's still out there like that? The punk community? It doesn't seem yeah, like it's, it. Is it? It's it's still there, but it's weird. You know, it's it's uh can you be a band a punk band and be and do do that same sort of sort of like tra- traveling circuit like you know, minor threat and black flag and all those dudes did. Yeah. They would just go on this. I wonder if you can still kind of do that. Yeah, you can still do it, but um I don't know, a lot of times that I, I I don't know, a lot of ways it might be uh easier than it was just because of social media and true. stuff like that now. That's true. You know, and um you're able to stay in contact and like, you know, like you can set up tours yourself and you can talk to people and stuff like that. But, but the, yeah, there's still people that tour and do all that like the hard way. Right. Know, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's just weird. Well, it's, Watt does that actually. Mike Watt still does that in, in, yeah. in, in the van. Yeah. They still drive the, the van around and man, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> as long as you, as long as you travel with the right people. It's, oh it's yeah. Weird. I know. Yeah. I bet it could be yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. If you're traveling yeah. with the wrong people, it's, oh man, it could be the end of the world. Yeah. So, so. I've seen plenty of bands like two or three that like, you could tell they were not having a good time with each other. And it was just like, it shows. It's just like, oh, really? it's just miserable. <laughs> yeah. Just... There's not much worse than being in, in a small crowded space yeah. with someone you, you're totally pissed <laughs> off at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Five people crammed in a van, just stinking. Right. Yeah, just hating, <laughs> hating life. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. yeah. It really does seem to be like a special kind of person. It's for, it's a lifestyle for a certain type of person. Like musicians seem yeah. to have, 
their musicians are like their own thing. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's very kind of specific, and that's one thing that once I started in my band when we started kind of like trying to make it and you know playing the Roxy or the whiskey and stuff like that. It's like, I started kind of realizing I'm not really, I like, I love music. I love to play music. I love to write Mm -hmm. music especially, but I'm not, and I like to to perform was really fun, you know, on stage, but, but I'm not that kind of person. I just don't have that thing, that traveling thing. There's a certain kind of personality that musicians have. And it's like, I was not really like that. You know what I mean? I was kind of like it, but not, enough like it to really i guess embrace maybe i don't know yeah it's it's a tough lifestyle i mean uh i never liked being in front of people and stuff so like you know i was i was like just doing roadie work so it was easy for me and stuff but like every, some people like really like to be in front of people right some people yeah. are really comfortable with that i was that was never my thing and stuff so so if you got that going on that's that's the place to be, I guess. That was the, the weird thing with me, though, is I because I was like the front man for all my bands and the singer. Oh you wow, know? yeah. And but I never, it never was something I ever wanted to be. It was like I, I ended up there because I, I wanted to write music. That was the whole point yeah. of having a band. Cause I was to, so into like it was like creating. It was like painting to me. It was cre- writing songs and then playing them. Yeah. Super fun. But um, for whatever reason, I was like the front man. But. I'm, you know, a super shy person, especially back then. I was so shy. Not anyone you think would want to be in, you know, I would never want to, wouldn't want to get up in front of a, my classroom or anything like that. Yeah. But, but when I was in the band, I was able to do it. It was like a switch went off. Sort of like I, I, I guess, like I believed in the music. I believed in what I was doing enough to sort yeah. of hide behind it or, or be confident enough to be in front of people doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I guess you're up there with people too, but like yeah, that's true. You know, but if you're singing, like that, you are up front. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's not something I could do, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was good. It was great. It was fun though. Um, okay, yeah, so yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to experience. Oh, like, for sure. To have been through it, you know. Like, right, it's great. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Every everyone should experience the band thing at some point. You know. Heck yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so you, so okay, you were you're always drawing. Uh, you, you 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 say in this interview that I read that it was something you you did to keep you sit you know sitting still so you can manage yeah. to sit still because you're like a not a sit still kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was like I wasn't a hyperactive child, but I was, I came pretty close to it, I guess. But I was like I always had to be fiddling with something. Right. So just sitting there like drawing just did it. I was like, whether sitting in school or sitting in church, I was just sitting there just doodling the entire time. Right. And uh, yeah, man, especially back in like pre high school and I guess up in high school, I used to just burn through sketchbooks like so fast. It would be a just front to back, just like really? full. Yeah, yeah, just like all the spaces. Do you have a, Do you have those? A lot of them still. Um, my mom has some of them. I know. It's yeah, scan enough. those things, man. Make they're, some they're books out funny. of them. <laughs> but, oh man, there's there's just some weird weird stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Who knows, man? You know, I wasn't even into like drawing skulls and stuff yet. Like just before high school and stuff, and it was just just weird drawings things. Like so, what? What, yeah. were you, what were you drawing? Just anything or, or? Yeah, I mean, I was I was always into like horror movies and stuff, but I had this thing where I like used to draw like I have like tons of these drawings of like uh of like a it's like an open closet and it's like packed full of boxes and stuff but like in all the negative spaces like there i would draw these like little like glowing eyes and stuff (laughs) and it would just be packed through like all crawling things and stuff and like that's or i'd be or i'd be drawing caves and things like that it was just it was just uh, kind of thing that just your hand just keeps moving and stuff it just it just goes on its own it's not a lot planned i wonder if it if it was like you know, automatic writing, like you were getting some kind of, if you look back at all that stuff, I wonder if you'd be getting insight into your personality or, or what you were going through at the time. Cause I don't oh, know, yeah, closets sure. with boxes and caves. It sounds very <laughs> like symbolic, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I always liked, I don't know, the idea of like little things running around everywhere and stuff out. Oh, right. Was, yeah. There's, you know, those are always my favorite, like, you know, Tales from the Dark Side episodes and things like that is when they were like little monsters and creatures. Right, There's right. something about that, you know, the gate, things yeah, like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I watched that really early. That probably is what really <laughs> did a number on me. 
So that's cool. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, still love that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's super fun. I love it. Uh, so, okay. You were doing that. How did you, I mean, how did you end up basically you did, you did like, you've done a lot of album covers and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So how did you, I mean, how did you wind up doing that? Just like doing it for your, your friends' bands and then kind of, yeah, it just yeah, it happened started, or what? Like in high school, like, you know, my, my high school friends, crappy bands, I would, I would draw like tape covers and stuff for them. And like, uh, and half of them didn't even become bands. There was just drawings I do for buddies of mine that were playing something terrible. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, then like, you know, I started doing flyers for shows and, um, uh, when I moved off to college down, I moved to Savannah, Georgia, and there was like an actual punk scene down there. And I started doing flyers for bands. And then that translated into doing artwork for bands. And then I started booking bands and like houses and warehouses and things like that. Oh wow! Then I, then I started touring with bands and it all just kind of snowballed like that. And so it was, it was great. But, uh, how long did that process take before you were kind of doing maybe more significant album covers or, you know, more significant things i guess i mean you know I'm, i don't know it depends like uh because a lot of it was in the, like the the underground punk scene and stuff so it's all so diy like people putting out their own things right so right. like you could start out a record label you just get a credit card and just find your friend's band and just max it out on their record and hope people buy it right and that's how <laughs> that's how a lot of these labels started is just maxing out a credit card yeah and uh so so did, did lots of that for like just like local bands and uh and uh, yeah, it was great. It just you know, it was, it was the way I, I communicated with these bands and had my I don't know. I guess I was important in that way for for that scene and stuff. Right. So that's what I graduated on to the next step of like booking bands and then like actually doing roadie work for bands. And that's that's when I started to travel. Right. And like that. So you were connect. But, you were like part of the scene even though you weren't a musician. Oh yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, no, that's the best part. I got the free ride. I didn't have to do all the work right. on stage, so <laughs> so that was good. But uh, but but yeah, it's it's great. It was uh, you know, like I said, the punk scene really gets around. It gets around all over the place. Mm-hmm. So you can go anywhere in the world on that scene if you know the right people, right? And uh, you run in the right crowds because you know there's there's reliable people and there's super unreliable people and yeah, right. Yeah, so it's it works out really well that way, but uh. Yeah, no, it's I'll, you know that's some like um, a lot of my a lot of my artist friends like when they're younger when they're starting off they 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 try to ask like how to move forward and do shows and stuff like that and I always tell them to like just just do art for all your friends crappy bands that's right. the best way because because it goes it gets printed it comes right out it's amazing right yeah it's like yeah. you have this you have this thing that's printed even if nobody's ever heard of this band it's a thing that's physical and it's got your art on it. And uh, you never know, like, because uh, you know your your friend's crappy band might make it huge someday, and there yep. you were a part of it. And so, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's a great way to start off, and you know, the the punk scene's got a lot of art to it as well, and stuff. So it's it's a great community to start out in as well. Yeah. So, so definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, so okay, so uh, I'm I'm just trying to figure out like your the timeline of your career basically you did this you started doing this in high school and what like out of high school it started snowballing and 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 you know what yeah. like early 20s you were doing album covers and stuff with yeah, un- yeah, underground was, bands and yeah and it pretty much stayed up doing it. like the last uh once i moved up to up here to philly i've been up here like right at 10 years that's when i started doing the, like taking the gallery work serious um uh, I was uh I started doing less and less album art mm-hmm. and stuff because I just I was just getting burned out like dealing with bands is a, a huge pain sometimes. Yeah, right. So, it doesn't pay so, a ton right either, right? No, it, it doesn't. But like again, it's the it's the having the thing printed and being out there and stuff. It's such a great thing. Yeah, stuff, but you but gotta like, uh, you gotta eat though. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta <laughs> deal with like you gotta deal with like their ideas and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. That some, gets... of them, some of them are great. They're like, just like, they just have like a very vague idea and they just want whatever you give them. Uh, yeah. Some of them are, right. some of them are picky. And yeah. It's just like, Oh man. And, uh, if it's not an idea I'm into, it's like, I, I'll never get it done. Right. It's like, I, I have to turn it into something that's mine or I'll just 
hate it and never finish it. And I can't turn in something that's, that I think sucks. Yeah. It's like, right. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. But, Definitely. um, but also I've always been a big believer in having a day job and stuff. Mm-hmm. I always, I always tell a lot of artists that way and stuff. I was like, I don't like the starving artist idea mm-hmm. and stuff. It's like, I'd rather, I've got, I've got friends that do like album art for anybody that pays and stuff. And right. I've always, I've always been too picky and it's like, if it's something I just hate, I just can't have my name attached to it. I was like, I'll never do this. I, I can't, I'll never get it done. And it's like, so yeah. having, having a day job affords affords you that. Yeah, yeah, you get you, the art becomes yours, and uh, right, man. And plus, I get mad. I was like, you know, I spend all this time making this making this art. The last thing I want to do is pay my crappy bills with it. I was like, <laughs> I'd rather have a sh- a shit job that pays the bills, right. and my art goes to something good, not to just staying alive. Right, so right. Oh man, it's it's got to be something more than this. But like, um, I don't know. That's I'm, I'm a workaholic too, though. So I was like, I have to stay moving all the time. Mm-hmm. I can't, I've never been very lazy and stuff or able to just like sit around. Right. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm good before I can. It's funny. You know, it's weird. I've said this before on the podcast. I, I've said, I've said this before on the podcast too. I always say that and it drives me insane because I feel like <laughs> such a dick. It's just, it's, uh, you know, you know, when you, you know, when you repeat things, uh, but anyway, I, so I have said this before, before in the podcast, but, um, sometimes like themes develop with the guests I have on, um, yeah. you know, like, uh, they all have something in common and it's totally random. It just kind of happens. And I think what's been going on lately on the podcast, I know it was with the last, um, the last guest, I don't, I don't know if it was the guest before that, but uh, the, the the day job thing, you know, it's mm-hmm. like the Mia Rajo is talking about the same, basically the same thing. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, she's great. Yeah, yeah. she's amazing, right? Um, she has a day job, and it's like she's totally into it. I mean, she, not into the not into the job, but like totally into what it affords her and how it allows her the freedom to do what she wants. You yep. know, so you know, there's there's uh a lot of different ways to be an artist it's it's not i mean i i i took the root of the full-time art thing but it took me you right. know it's almost killed me and yeah. it took me like seven years of working in my day job to transition out and and it's and it's been it's been fucking brutal it's been the hardest thing i've ever done and it so yeah. there's definitely a, i've paid a price i definitely have, i know i've taken like years off my life for sure <laughs> it's gonna come back to bite me on the ass i know because yeah. i've pushed myself way yeah. too hard so there, I mean, there's a lot to be said about um that that approach you know it's totally valid and it seems like more and more people are kind of doing that you know more and more yeah. artists are, are cool with that which is good yeah yeah i mean it's it is it's uh i mean man I remember when I, the times when I was broke in between jobs, it did not motivate me to work, right. <laughs> to work on my own stuff. That's right. for sure. I was like, <laughs> I, I think it was just the stress and everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, it just, that doesn't work for me. Oh yeah. So, Financial stress is the worst oh, thing man, to get yeah, you just, creative feeling, you know, oh, it just kills it. Yeah. yeah. It's some people like, you know, like they need it to get the fire going, but it's like, not me. I'm like, man, I, that's all I'll think about is just like, how the hell am I going to pay rent and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but also the artist lifestyle is, is difficult, no matter what day job or not. Right. It's like talk about taking years off your life, man. That's. Uh, <laughs> it's you, true. You work nonstop, and uh, yeah, it's just. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Luckily, luckily, my girlfriend has like um, work that she does at home and stuff that keeps her busy because not the worst of watching somebody draw for twelve hours. Like that's the most boring thing in the world. Right. You know? <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Pe- <laughs> yeah. People don't realize people don't realize what it's like. People that aren't artists, um, uh, it seems it seems so great. It seems like ah, oh, you got it made, and it's like you know, in some ways, it's it's amazing and great and excellent. And I oh, love yeah. it. And then in other ways, it's it's worse than any other job I've had in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's never done. Yeah, it's like it's like. It's done when you can't work on it anymore. Right, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, that, it's it's a, it's a trip. It's weird. It's yeah. a really strange lifestyle. No doubt. It's it's good. I mean, I'd, I'd be doing it 
whether it had a place to go or not. You right. Know, I'd be sitting there doodling anyways and working right. on stuff. But uh, it's nice that it has a place to go, you know, that yeah. people, people see the final product and that's cool. But they're like, yeah, they don't see the, the hours sitting there yep. working on it and stuff. Cause that's, man, that is brutally boring to see, you know? Like, yeah. And sometimes yeah. Br- often brutally boring to do. There's po- points, yeah. you know, where you have to, just push through a piece to get it done because it's like, you know, it's not, there's a, there's a period usually for me and it's not always like this, but there's a good chunk of time where it's like, I don't want to, I I just want to watch TV right now. I just want to watch a movie or something. I don't really want to do this. I, but it's, I have to get, get it. I have to get through this phase to get to this phase. I want to work at, which is like the kind of polishing up, finishing touches and, you know, rendering that stuff I really enjoy. So there's always oh, like totally. a point where you're just like, huh, or not always, but oftentimes there's a point that's it's just not fun and you have to kind of make yourself yeah. do it, you know? Yeah, and you're at the crappy stage where you wouldn't show anybody and it's just like, just got to power through this part to get to the good stuff. Right. Ugh, and then it's like, is this worth it? And it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a tough one, man. It's like some sometimes there's a stage where it's like, should I start this over? And it's just like, no, it's going to go. It's right, gonna go. right, and right. Eventually it gets to the part and it's like, there it is, yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> That's but what, yeah, it has has some moments where it's kind of ugly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I started, you know, on Instagram a while back when I was showing all my progress stuff. Like I, I'm, I'm on, I've moved all my progress stuff to Patreon now. Yeah. But um, I was showing like my progress and stuff on Instagram, and I was specifically showing my paintings at the at the crappy stage, at the, oh, nice. at the ugly stage, because I was trying to make the point that. You know, this you'll see in the end, this is going to look good, but you have you have to live through the crappy. You have to live live through the ugly stage. It's like an adolescent yeah. stage of, <laughs> of a painting as an adolescent stage that you have to get through. It's like in the beginning, it's all brand new and exciting, like a little baby and a little, a little yeah. kid and cute or whatever. And then you get through the stinky going through puberty stage and it's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to kind of like stick with it until it becomes a beautiful adult, you know? <laughs> oh, totally. totally. Yeah. I, I remember you used to have like, uh, there was like the Friday night art dorks. Yeah. Stuff, right. Like that. I remember that stuff. And, um, and I uh, was it? remember, that. uh, Periscope was there for a minute yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't do much like on computers and stuff. Like I'm, I'm usually the last to catch on to something. Mm-hmm. And um, I really liked Periscope because it was just like other artists I knew were just sitting there right. working with their phone on. And I was like, this is amazing. It's <laughs> like everybody's, everybody else is sitting in their basement for like hours. Right. And everybody else is like <laughs> hanging out and stuff. And it's just like, oh, this is nice. Right, right. And, uh, but I guess Periscope was something actually terrible if you used it for what normal people use it for, I guess. Like, like what's out there in the world, what's popular is an awful thing. Right. You know? when, <laughs> exactly. I was, when I saw it for that, I was like, all right, this, this is terrible. <laughs> but, uh, just every social media is that way. Yeah. You know, if you're not yeah. using it for art, it's something terrible. Right. Probably. Probably. Although, yeah. you know, there, there, are, uh, there are some good things that come of it, like getting dogs rescued and adopted. There's like that whole thing that goes on. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's my Facebook. Well, I don't use Facebook too much. I mostly just post pictures and stuff and use it for events mm-hmm. because um, I'm friends with all this like German Shepherd rescues mm-hmm. and stuff. And so half my feed is just like German Shepherd rescue stuff. And it's like <laughs> I can't look at this. Yeah. It's, it's depressing and horrible. Oh man. So yeah. I, I kind of built that cage myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, uh, social media is, is, is a mixed bag. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Nowadays, it's good. It nowadays keeps me especially. in contact with people. So, yeah. Yeah. I've been on there less now than I've ever been on there. Like I just couldn't deal. I, I got to a point I was really active on it for a long time. I was a big proponent of it for artists too. Um, yeah. and I still am, but I just couldn't take it anymore. It was just sick of, hearing everybody's every single thought that was going on in people's heads. They just like, yeah, put it on social media. And I, and it's just like this inundation of everybody's, you know, sick or upset or someone's parents just died or, you know, just like all this negative shit coming at me. So it's just like, Oh man, I got to get off here. The politics and all that. It's just like, uh, I can't take it anymore. Yeah, and I've felt so much one, better. I've been, I've felt so much better since I've been off there. It's really kind of uh, it was. I had to do it. Yeah, I've I've never wanted to like post personal stuff. Really. Right. You know, it's like, I've, you know, I 
when I'm doing outdoorsy stuff, I'll post some pictures of that stuff, but mm-hmm. it's never like super personal things. Right. And some people like share everything so personal out there. And I was like, man, you're just throwing that out there. That's, yeah. That's not something I'll do. That's, right. I know, it's that's, weird. Hard, that's hard to imagine. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, yeah. You know, I, I like it and I hate it. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> Like, but uh, yeah, it does keep me in contact with a lot of people. So that, that's good because otherwise I'm terrible at calling mm-hmm. and writing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, how'd you get into the, the showing in galleries? How did you crack that nut? Um, a lot of people have a hard time getting into galleries. Yeah, that that is a, that can be a tough one. Like uh, it's mostly just, I don't know. I, I run a, I run a small gallery here as well. And I tell people, I was like, the best way to get into it is just to be active in your art community. Right. You know, it's like, too. go to the shows, like, meet the people yeah, that are showing, meet the people, you know? Yeah. Like I don't show people that don't come out, you know? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, a, you know, it's, I try to, you know, I try to keep the community like, you know, like active and stuff. And like, if you're not coming out and supporting, I don't really want to show your work. Right. So, yeah, you got to you got to be active in the art community. If, if you're around and, you know, I don't know, it's just great. Like if, if you're getting into the arts and you find out where artists go and, you know, you start hanging out at shows, you meet other artists. It's like suddenly you have something in common because mm-hmm. you know, it's again, it's like, you know, sp- spending all night in your basement drawing and stuff. That's that's a hard group to find right stuff. and when you find them it's just like wow somebody else does this this is right amazing. yeah yeah I, re- so. I, yeah I remember when i yeah when i first found the cannibal flower group shows i was like wow this is like i've dreamt about this since i was a kid you know yes. like my people no it's the best but uh yeah it's just hanging out and you meet people and like you know you work your way into these things it's um you know you just gotta you gotta work too and uh i don't know with like uh with social media and stuff like i think some people are coming at it a little early sometimes you know they want to get into galleries and stuff and it's like it's like you know worked for a long time before it was really worth showing people right and like yeah i know that's i've made that point many times yeah and and you get a lot out there forever (laughs) once you put it out there totally no i remember in high school like one of the one of the ways i learned to draw is just like trying to figure out puss head you know puss head was was like one of my idols in high yep. school and it was like, how the hell did he do this stuff? And just trying to redraw Pusshead. And I, I don't know, I guess if I was in high school now, I'd probably be posting that on social media, like right. check out this Pusshead drawing. <laughs> and it's not the thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's cool to show people, but it's not something to like post about. And like, uh, you know, you got to find, you got to find your, your way of doing things. Cause you get a lot of copycats and stuff like that because they're younger mm-hmm. and they're trying to figure out stuff from the way other artists do it. And it's just like, but you don't show this, right? you know, exactly. you, you got to make it yours. And, uh, that, that comes with time. You yep. know, it's, it, it took me years to find like my style, the way I really wanted it. And stuff. Mm-hmm. And, yep. You know, that, that felt right. And, uh, yeah, it takes years. That's the, that's yeah. the thing nobody wants to hear. I guess a lot of young people don't, you know, when you're young, you don't want to hear it. You know, you have to think, five years down the road or whatever, or three years oh, down totally. the road. It's like, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> but yeah, man, but it's just like, you know, it's the truth though. Yeah. Just find out where other artists are and just start hanging out, you know, and right. like, you know, there'll always be some kind of group art thing. You know, you can always like get your work into somehow, you know, there's, they usually start out super informal and stuff. You show in coffee shops and different places like that. You know, that's a great way to start. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I used and, uh, to I, I used to show in any any place that would have me. I mean, I've lost a couple paintings because I would show any place yeah. that would have me. That I never got it. You know, I oh, showed man. I showed at a coffee shop, and I still haven't gotten a painting back from that place. And oh, jeez, yeah. But um, t- uh, so well, how did you get? You know, not being in L.A., how did you start showing at Think Space and stuff and and Last Rites? Well, New York's kind of close to you, right? Yeah, yeah, New York's only like an hour and a half. Okay, so how'd you but, how'd uh, you start showing out on the West Coast? Well, uh, on the West Coast, it was like uh, pretty much with with friends and stuff, like you know, like uh, meeting and hanging out with other artists and stuff, and then they and then you get introduced to galleries that they're showing with, you know, and like that's kind of the thing because there's you know you could submit portfolios to galleries, but like a thousand other people just did that the same day. Right. You know, so it's, it's really hard to get somebody to notice your work that way. It does, does work, but it doesn't always work great. 
Right. You know, usually you need an introduction to mm-hmm. it to a gallery for someone to like really look at your work. Right. And, um, it was just like that. It was through other friends that showed there and stuff. And mm-hmm. like, they liked my work and, um, and it, it wasn't a quick thing either. You know, it was like, I was talking with, uh, the gallery there and they were just kind of like, uh, staying in contact and just wanted to see, you know, how I was showing on my own and, you know, I guess making sure that the work was consistent. It's right. not like, Oh, you did this thing, but then you didn't do anything for like six months. Right. You know? So, yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's, so you got to kind of show that, you know, you, you're serious about yeah. it. It's not, you got to prove yourself, you know, you know, cause it's, galleries are thinking about that when they see artists, especially newer artists, they might see yeah. amazing work, but <laughs> you know, I, I, I came up with a bunch of artists that, that were great and that were showing all the time. And then they just dropped off and stopped Yeah, and nobody wants yeah. that. No one wants to invest time in, in that, you know, None no, and galleries or collectors. Is. Yeah, and it is. It's a tough lifestyle, you know. So mm-hmm. a lot of people do drop out. It's a lot of it's an endurance race. Yeah, you know, right. It's like, yeah, man, it's it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That, you you you. So you run. Uh, do you do you run the, the the convent? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The convent, Philly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, what's the story behind that? Because I, before you get, go into that, I I, I feel like. Um, that you know what you guys are doing with your art scene it, um is you know, is really what every community should do, be doing every small yeah. every town every town that has m- at least two artists in it <laughs> should be should be doing this and you guys totally. basically started your own scene and it's you know I hear about it all the time it's like hap- it sounds like a happening spot you know Oh, Philly's great, man. I'd, I'd take it over anywhere just about. And so it's it's got such a good art community. Yeah, right. It's it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, the amount of so talent many... is crazy. It's weird yeah. that all, all so much talent, you know, yeah. congregated in one a spot. You'd never you why Philly? Why yeah, why yeah, not anywhere awesome. else? It's like you never know. Yeah, it's weird. I was you know because I've lived in like uh, Savannah, Georgia. That you know it's big art college town and stuff like that. And then I lived in um, Asheville, North Carolina, which is like an artsy place. Up mm-hmm. in the mountains and uh and then i came up here to like you know ugly philly and like that was where the first time i was ever felt like part of an art community right and stuff and it was just like there a few a few years back there wasn't really any galleries uh for this kind of work that like had like an online presence or took it serious and stuff and uh you know then along came galleries like paradigm and arch enemy mm-hmm. like that started taking it serious and because there was nobody taking it serious for so long, the artist community just grew into itself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like artists were just hanging out and they were showing with each other and just doing their own thing and just working. And it wasn't going anywhere. It was just building up and stuff. And all of a sudden you have a couple of galleries that pop up, have like an online presence. And suddenly it's like, this art is already there. And it's like, it's just amazing. It's like, you know, it's artists feeding off each other. Mm-hmm. You know, you see somebody else is working like crazy you feel bad for the night you took off, you know, right, it's like, right. it's like, I should have got so much more done. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You keep each other a, in check. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a great scene for that. And, um, yeah, it was, it was just really good. And, uh, and now there's, it's just a great town for art because it's, there's just so many artists here. It's just a very inspirational thing to just go out and like be able to hang out with all these other artists. And there's like nonstop art events going on in right. this town. So, so do you think it just kind of naturally, organically happened because a bunch of artists just kind of happened to wind up there, yeah, and, and became friends, and it just kind of and naturally grew? Totally. Yeah, and it's uh, you know, and and there's so many different factions of the arts community here too, and stuff. You know, I really hang out with like with like mine. It's more the the darker illustrative and mm-hmm. apparently, you know, you know, I don't hang out so much with like the street art group, which have right. their own like galleries and stuff like that. And like, and uh, then you have all your, your high end and your touristy galleries and stuff like that, that I'll go anywhere near. And um, it's just interesting that this is a really big city, but it doesn't feel like it because mm-hmm. it's kind of divided into North, South, East and West. Mm-hmm. And each one's like kind of self-contained. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting. There's so much going on in this town. Right. But uh, it's also because this town is super affordable. It's super ah, cheap. Really? And it's going it's going up in the world real fast. Mm-hmm. But um, it's still cheap. Like uh, we're getting a huge influx of people from New York because nobody can afford New York anymore. Right. 
and stuff. I always tell my New York artist friends, it's like, why are you struggling up here? Right. like, Philly's like driving's distance. You could live <laughs> there and still show in New York. Right. Like, this is difficult. You're living in a closet, you know? Yeah, right. Paying more rent than I ever would. <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, but, it uh, is insane. But yeah, Philly's just got like a great community and like, you know, the people in it are what do it, you know, everybody's, everybody's great. Yeah. You know, it's just hard to nail it down. It's just cool to see such hardworking artists. It's not just like, Oh, I, I draw and I paint and stuff. These are like hard workers right. and stuff. It's great. You know, even ones that aren't as well known or like work just as hard as any, like, you know, like professional gallery artists mm-hmm. does, you know, they're like putting it out there. On right. their own. Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing. It's really like it. It is. It's. It's like the punk rock model. It seems like yeah, it starting really your own scene. You know, just start your own band. Start your. You know, start showing at whatever pl- clubs will have you, and then a scene just kind of grows out of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, it, yeah. People just see other artists and stuff, and it just grows. It's great. You know, how, so more, how, more people come around. So what's what's the story with the 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 convent? The, oh, convent. the convents. It's, it's it's amazing. We've been here for about six years, and uh, oh wow, and uh, we haven't been doing the gallery that entire time. What what is it? Off what is it to start well, with? You know uh, what, what is it like a commune a real, or is it like an art gallery or what? A collective? Oh, it's, it's it's a real convent. It's a real 1950s like Franciscan convent. Oh, there used really? to be like yeah, there used to be twelve nuns that used to live here. Oh, it's so amazing. It's, it's crazy. It's yeah, like a dream, there's like dream place. Oh, it's bizarre, man. It's it's uh. It's from the fifties, so it's not like creepy Catholic, right, like yeah. cool and stuff. But it's like, it's a it's a big like two story place with like a huge like finished basement, but it has like a chapel on the front, and uh, so we have like church pews and all that stuff, and that's our main gallery space. And then we have oh, a couple amazing. rooms off of that with like these long halls. It's all gallery space. It's, it's pretty nice. So do you like and rent I, it with with other? You, do people all pitch in together and rent it, or what's the? Uh, you does some one person rent it, or how does that? Sounds expensive well, as hell to me, but well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, there's it's a uh, well, there's a I started years ago. I started showing with this uh, Gristle Gallery up in um, in Brooklyn, and um, I didn't know who they were, and like none of my friends really knew who they were and stuff. So like uh, they asked me to do a show there, and back then I would show anywhere anyway. So I was like, yeah, I'll check this out. I don't know anybody there. That'll be fun. Mm-hmm. And um, and I did a show up there, and it was great. It was like a a tattoo shop and gallery but when they have like art openings all the tattoo stuff is like put away it's not like walls full of flash and, right. and chairs everywhere it's like completely cleared out and it's just like the walls and um it was a great place to show and uh and it was like one of my earlier times showing in new york so it was pretty nice and uh, i just kept showing with them over the years and like i would just send them like all these names from philly because they were like all these artists from philly that you know, it's really hard to break into the New York scene and stuff. So I right. started sending them like them up to Gristle as well. And, uh, you know, that grew like that. And I've, you know, they've become like family and, uh, living here in Philly, they were thinking about like moving to Philly or something or doing something with Philly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they found this old convent and they decided to buy it. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah. And it was like right when I had to move. So I was like, I was like, Oh, you should let us move in there. We'll like work out the bugs for you and stuff. Cause I've always worked maintenance and, in uh construction jobs and uh so we like moved like right in like the day they signed so you it. live at the you live there yeah oh yeah, wow we here. yeah and like we Who? moved right in and like just started renovating the place it was abandoned for a couple of years uh-huh. and stuff but it wasn't too bad off you know needed a new roof and and it, it's a weird building because it's a big building with like long hallways and like it's got like 12 bedrooms upstairs wow but they're all like little nun rooms so they're like eight by ten but <laughs> they have doors in between them so as long as you got two of them it's a great room but if you had one it's kind of like being in like a dorm or something right. like old folks home <laughs> but uh yeah we pulled up like miles of carpet and just kind of cleaned the place up and and it's just amazing but it has this space on the front that's just perfect for shows and so like I just started renovating the chapel area and I put in all track lighting and stuff. And wow. we just kind of started doing like show, like shows with friends and like, it just kind of grew. Like every time we had a show, I renovated a little bit more and a little more and it became more and more of like a real gallery space. And, uh, you know, and it's, and it's, it's based a lot off the model of like, uh, up in New York, there are people with jobs that like curate art shows at people's houses. And oh stuff. really? And like, that's a whole business, like where these people will, Rich, you know, rich what, people. 
it's for wealthy people. okay yeah yeah like uh, so i've never heard of that <laughs> yeah they'll they'll hire these people to curate an art show in their house and then they'll have these art parties wow. where they show off his art shows to all their rich friends and stuff really strange but i, I love the idea of that yeah. it's like we have this space that is just like you know I don't, what else do you do with it it's it's great like right. we have living rooms and libraries and everything else in here but like this is this great show space so we started doing shows there and um and it's just grown from there we have like a a great following and stuff and it's like we don't advertise a lot and stuff because it's a small space right and, uh, yeah i don't and it's see and it any... packs out really yeah i don't i never i, I have no like do you have pictures is there a website because it's like i don't have any i just keep hearing about it yeah it's mostly word of mouth and stuff we have some stuff but like uh you know we're on like social media and stuff like that because that's that's how a lot of our crowd sees us okay but, um, but so, the, so you're on facebook up, yeah we're on facebook and uh and there's Instagram pictures on there our most active yeah yeah there's some pictures well, what would what, um, you say the most active was, one was? Uh, Instagram. Okay, I'm going to look that it's, up. I want to yeah. see what the hell this looks like. It sounds so cool. <laughs> it's pretty fun, but it's uh, The Convent Philly. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking it uh, up. I know when people try to come here, if they just put in The Convent into like... I uh, see, The Convent Philly. Into uh, their GPS, it'll take you to a real convent full of nuns. You don't want that. Oh, no way. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We've had like a... So it's like a small, it's like a little smallish kind of place. It's not a huge, giant. No, uh, no, it's not huge. It's a, it's a, it's a good size gallery. Right. For a gallery space. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's good size for that. But like, uh, but yeah, it was a chapel for like a dozen nuns and, um, it's, it's great. It's got ah, stained glass. So cool. It's, yeah. I'm looking. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. We, we have a lot of bands do photo shoots and stuff here and like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Do you put on shows there? Like band, do bands play also? No, not really, because it's uh, you can't really be loud in this place. It's the middle of a neighborhood. And oh, really? It's, it's really just like a shell of a building. There's not much. There's probably no insulation in the right. walls and stuff. But uh, so yeah, there's nothing to block sound. But like, uh, we've had like more like one man bands kind of things and stuff. Right. Like play. Yeah, yeah. That thing, but it's mostly in like an art space and like we'll do movie nights and all kinds of odds and ends. It's it's great. That's but, excellent. Uh, the art shows is our main thing. But yeah, yeah. So you're doing, you're running that. You're running that. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. So you have to deal with a lot of bullshit. I imagine <laughs> running a gallery. Um, yeah, a bit. It's it's. Uh, it's I, I've curated enough to know it's it's. Um, you know, artists are. I'm an artist. Artists are my people, but they're sometimes not very easy to deal with. Occasionally, with uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah artists can be weird yeah yeah and, uh, it's it, the stereotype is true sometimes article our artists are kind of um you know uh they can they can be temperamental um anyway i don't i don't want to go into that because artists yeah. get enough shit but but no you, doubt but you i'm uh, pretty picky i'm pretty picky about who i show as well and you and guys kind of like, know each other too mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah, I bring in a lot of people that I've shown with, like out west and in New York and stuff. So I'm able to bring like, like uh, names into Philly that wouldn't normally like come to Philly, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, so, that, so that's pretty nice. But yeah, I'm pretty picky. So like, I've never really had like a a bad experience. But uh, I also like to book like my friends that are that are hard workers, but are like really unprofessional. You know, mm -hmm. they like punks and stuff like that. I'll bring them in. And they've never shown in galleries and like. They've maybe shown in the coffee shop, and they'll bring stuff that's like in just the jankiest frame, right? Like unframed, it'll just show up unframed. It's just like, you know, I help them out because I was like, I'm not gonna let it be a bad show, you know? right? So right. They're starting out, so it's like I've totally like reframed people's work and stuff, yeah, and it's, things like that, and like, yeah, it's it's a little bit stressful, but it's not bad. But it's it's worth it to have like a good show and like you know, yeah. and these some of these guys are learning early, you know, that like, this is how it's done. Right. It's, you right. Know, the more presentable your work, the more people will look at it. If it's just like, looks like shit, nobody's going to pay attention to it. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. I learned, yeah. I, I remember learning that lesson myself when I oh, started yeah. showing, you know, Fra yep. framing is important. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's the presentation that counts. Cause yeah, people, will go, people will go right by it. Yeah. It's the, it make, it's the, it can often be the difference between selling something and not selling it. Yeah, no, you know? very much so. Yeah. What? What? At the kind same of, time. Why not? Go at ahead. The same, 
<laughs> at the same time, I love going to like like big fancy galleries and like you can see like duct tape coming around the side of a frame and stuff. Uh-huh. You know, the back is just solid duct tape. It's right. like, oh, you jerk! <laughs> you know, I know you sell paintings for like real money, and you're mm-hmm. still turning in some like crap frame. <laughs> that's just I, I still look for that kind of stuff. And yeah. it's like, oh man, that's that's lazy. <laughs> So are you put, do you guys do shows like every month? Are you on a one- um, Yeah, we started out, um, like we started out kind of slow. And then like for a while there, we were doing them once a month. We do like second Fridays. Cause okay. For, first Friday is such a zoo. Right. And um, yeah. And like if we do first Friday shows, we miss so many other people's shows. So like second uh-huh. Fridays were always our nights. And um, yeah, it was great. We, we always, we always have great turnouts. It's a great supportive community and stuff mm-hmm. so it's cool and that's you know like i try to get like uh you know someone who's like a little more out there bigger of a name and then i'll book them with like uh you know i'll usually split the room in between like two or three people so right. you, know, you really need to bring in like six pieces eight pieces something like that it doesn't have to be too much right and, um you know and I'll, I'll book them with like some of my my younger friends and stuff that haven't shown as much and like you know, and it's, it's great for these artists to meet because they've never experienced this kind of thing. And they get to see how like, you know, a more formal artist does right. their work. And yeah. it's, it's just a great mix, you know, you to pick artists that are like, like all great talented and then like putting them together from totally different worlds. It's right. just great. Yeah. It's a, it's a great thing to do. Wow. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, you got to invest in your art community because it's, yeah. it's just the greatest thing out there. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. It just, I mean, it just goes to show. I mean, imagine that, imagine, imagine, uh, that place not existing, yeah. how a different everybody's lives would be in that community. It would not, it, you know, might not have that same galvan galvanized community vibe. Yeah, man. It's yeah. We get a, we get a lot of, a lot of different characters from different places. You know, a lot of, a lot of people I deal with come from like the music scene and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's a, that's a fun scene too. Cause like, uh, you get all these guys that do these like crazy paintings for like, like, uh, record covers and stuff. And, uh, they'll do this epic painting and then it just goes in a stack or in a drawer. They right. don't do anything else with it. So, you know, I'll find out about this. I'll be like, I'll be like, send those my way. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff. I was like, I, I want to show these off cause nobody else has seen this. Right. You know? Except for the people that bought this record. And like right. not a lot of people know that record, you know, yep. there's other groups that would never go near that record. And so, and, um, yeah, it's it's just amazing. Like, uh, we we got lucky. We got uh, Paulo Girardi. Are you familiar with his work? Mm, and stuff? No, I don't think so. He's, he's an Italian artist. And, oh man, just epic, epic paintings. It's like it's like Bosch style, like hell scenes and stuff. Oh, yeah? and it's all like crazy stuff for like like all these metal bands. And all he does is heavy metal. That's all he'll do. He won't do anything else. That's really? all he does. And um, yeah, he he never really shows or anything like that. And he came out to a couple of shows and like, you know, I talked to him and he was like, Oh, maybe I'll send you a painting. And I was like, okay. And sure enough, he sent a couple of paintings in the mail and I'm like, Oh my God. And I had these like huge paintings. Like I framed them up and had them out there. And then like, um, he's coming from Italy. And I was like, well, why don't you just, why don't we just set up a show for you next time you're in town? Like next time you visit. So we set up a show for him and it was crazy. Wow. And we had all these metal heads here that have never been to a gallery before. And, um, and they walk in and like, they're afraid to walk through doorways without asking and stuff. And I was like, it's all gallery space. And I was like, wander around and stuff. They just not know what to do. Like hands right. in their pockets, like nervous. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the same thing you bought on the album, but it's like in person. Right. You know? Yeah. No, it's I, just amazing. I know that I, I get, I know that, um, you know, people are surprised people that, that aren't, um, familiar with art shows. Yeah, they're surprised that you know. Usually, a, sh- a show is free, and so people are like calling up. You know, how much do I have to pay to get in? And it's like, <laughs> you know, L.A. All the shows are free, pretty much. Most of them are, are, yeah. are free. Some of them have a little small cover charge, but um, yeah, it's it's like a whole new scene for some people. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty. Amazing. I love that though. It's and cool. to hook that crowd, you know, because it's like you like the album, you like you know the art. Right. It's part of it and stuff. It's like to meet the person who did it. It's like a whole nother level. It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's kind of, it's kind of a connection to the band in a way too. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, gets them closer to the band in a weird way, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of the artists we show here, like, you know, they do stuff for, like, you know, I'll walk around with people and I was like, this person did, like, all this stuff with these punk bands and these are these metal bands and all this stuff. And, like, it's just crazy. There's, like, a, you know, everybody's got their history of how they got to where they are and stuff. Right. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I mean, do you, do you have, like, do you have, like, a gift shop? Are you, do you have t-shirts? Are you, you know, I mean, there's all these things that you kind of have to do nowadays to, yeah. to, to make, to make it financially viable. You know, it's got something, you got to pay the bills on this stuff. I yeah, mean, we've, we've, we've thought about it. We haven't like done it and stuff, but we've, we've kind of joked around about doing it. It's just something we just have put off. Right. It, you can, yeah. you know, you can be creative with it though and really make it cool, oh, totally. and, you know, and have really fun stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, we have the artists and stuff. So right. Like, there's no real excuse other than just like we just haven't done it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you. Um, I mean, it's growing every year, right? You're, yeah. This, so every year has kind of gotten better since you've started it. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, when I've did got you start it? I don't know. It's probably been going for about five years. Okay. But you know, it wasn't like super consistent in the first few years and stuff, and um, and. Uh, I don't know. We're looking into like a, like a, a second venue. We've got a couple other venues we got a line on and stuff about like uh, doing some slightly bigger shows. Oh, stuff cool! Because like, that. like wow. cause sometimes our space is like you know we don't advertise much because we're already full. You know, if like it gets more than that, it's just like it's so hard to get around and stuff. That's so. crazy, man. But yeah, That's so we're amazing. looking into some other venues. Like we've had some offers and like and summers in Philly are just disgusting. It's so hot. Oh, really? And, um, so like. There's a there's another venue I want to use that's like just for summertime use. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stuff would be great. So, yeah. yeah. Nice air conditioning in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a neat space. It's a it's a lot of fun, but uh it's it's really hard not to have it outgrow itself. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great though. I mean that's 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 exciting when something works like that. You know? Yeah. It just starts growing. That's like that's the best. Yeah. Uh, man. I mean, what, what's the, th- I, I thought it was kind of more geared towards dark art, but is that not true or is it kind of like the case or? Uh, it, it pretty much is. And so okay. like, uh, yeah, it's I, like, I don't, I don't give anybody any, like any regulations as like, you know, do whatever you do. You know, right. like yeah, yeah. we invite you to the show because we like your work. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to do something specific to this. Right. And, um, and uh, I really like getting people to show stuff that they already have too. I was like, I was like, if you have a piece at home that never got much attention that you like, right. and you want to show it, I'll totally put it here, because uh, then you get lucky, you get some epic painting that somebody would have done for like some massive gallery, but suddenly it's in your gallery right. and stuff, and you get some <laughs> epic pieces. And it's just like, holy cow! Wow, like, I can't believe this is sitting here. And um, but yeah, it's you know, it's uh. I don't know. Sometimes you're just in all these like big group shows and like your work never really got any attention, right. you know, because there's like a hundred some people in the same show. And so, so you have this piece and it's like, you can't just like hang it up, you know, like, yeah. Or you, like you can't just give up on it and just like throw it in a pile. It's like, fucking it's like cri- bring it over here. I want to show this piece. Yeah. That's Christopher yeah. Ulrich. Christopher yeah. Ulrich's life story. I don't know if you've ever seen his stuff. He's got, he just makes these, he makes wall size paintings that are so amazing. And then it's like, if they don't, don't sell, then he has to be stuck with these huge ass paintings. <laughs> They're Man. amazing. Um, yeah, that's it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's, I don't know the art community. It's like, you know, I'm in the arts, so that's why I like it so much. I guess if you're not so much in the arts, it probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't listen to this podcast. But, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um, I don't know. It's it's great to be around creative people and stuff. And it's every town's got them. They're hiding somewhere. Right, in the right. Or something, yeah. So. Sometimes it just yeah. takes a few people getting together and 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 starting something. And 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 uh, uh, you know, if if there's enough, the people will come out of the woodwork. You know. Yep. Yep. It can happen, man. And you yeah. just you just never know where it'll go. Right. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, I I, I think. Uh, Every, like I said, every town should follow your lead. Um, yeah, man. Like if you've got a space in your house, man, just just have a freaking art party in right. your house. You know, yeah, it's great. Yeah. If you know artists, like you know, 
it's it's just great fun. You know? Hook up with a coffee shop or a bar or who knows what, you know, what you yeah. work with whatever you got, you know. Yep. Yeah, every little bit counts and stuff because you never know who's going to be sitting there, you know, like who's going to actually see it and, you know, and it grows from there. Right. You know? Well, okay. I, I want to talk a little bit more about your art. Um, you know, I always thought, I I think of you kind of like as a dark artist. I know you <laughs> maybe don't think of it that way. Uh, and it's not all necessary. It's not all dark, but I don't, to me, it has, it has the aesthetic, you know, it kind of yeah. has the dark art aesthetic a little bit and not in the most obvious ways. It's more like, I don't know. There's other there's other aspects to dark art than, you know, monsters and skulls. There's other things. There's like you know the sense of mystery and the kind of fantasy element. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the and the color palette even. You know, most dark art isn't like there are, are some, Super but most bright. yeah, most of them aren't like neon colors. So I mean, I, I think that I always just saw you that way. So um, I, I'm just curious. I know you're not you know into labeling no one's into labeling themselves really yeah. i guess but um i mean do you feel comfortable with that yeah. you know I'm, I'm fine with the i'm fine with the dark art part but it's like uh i never really thought i was all that dark and stuff uh. and i was like i was like I'm, I'm the lightweight in the bunch like you know unless i'm doing something <laughs> like uh it's like i've i've done some stuff for like uh um uh, like cadaver records which is like horror audiobooks and stuff oh, wow. like we just we just did the beyond record and like that's like the goriest thing i've ever done and that's that was cool. a joke. I was like, I was like, I've never done this much blood on anything. It's like, it's, I just had to keep putting it in, and adding it, building it up. Building right, it up. right. It's very strange, but but, uh, but that's a that's an example of what yeah. people tend to think of as dark art. Whereas I I see it as like, you know, it, it it encompasses also your style of work and the kind of stuff that you do. I think. Oh, it's, totally. That's you know I, what I mean. I like it there. You know, it's like, um, yeah, it's weird. It's like I've some of the group some of the galleries that show in like I'm I'm like the creepier side of their right right of their artist list and stuff right. I always thought that was funny I was like I didn't think it was that dark right. but it was, <laughs> you know but that's it, how I was too when I was first yeah. showing it's it's very odd but it's like yeah I, I guess I, cuz when I think dark art I think of somebody like way darker you know way well, see that that way yeah. more in your face, right? But that that's yeah. I mean that's one of the goals of the podcast is to you know um, educate the general public and sort of get people thinking about what dark art can be and and sort of what how broad it can be, you know? Yeah. It it it's 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 weird. It's weird. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> have yeah. It's 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 more than just you know what people think of and. I just, you know, I, when I realized that everyone was calling it that, I just kind of embraced it and said, okay, let's just start calling it that because everybody already does. And yeah. then we don't have to worry about coming up with a name. We don't, you know, it's like everybody's always tried to come up with a name for their movement and it never sticks. You know, I tried yeah. it a few times with my stuff. I've seen it happen over and over. And when you have a name that everybody's using, it just makes more sense to just use it. And then for yeah. them, because the name doesn't matter anyway, it's just stupid. It's just a marketing thing. It's, you know, so it's totally. like, so might as well just accept it and, and just, kind yeah. of you know, then, and then make the name cool instead of finding the perfect name for your movement. The mo the name becomes cool because of the art, not the other way around. It's not like, you know, you can have a shitty ass art movement and then have a really cool name and it's still going to suck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still not interesting, but, um, but yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's like the, you know, the the dark art crowd is some of the more interesting art. You know. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, that's it what I find. Get boring. And then you and know? I found the nice nicest people as well, which is another weird conundrum of what you know people people yeah. don't expect this, but the dark art people are like the nice guys or the yeah. girls, the nice people, you know. Yeah, and that, that works even in music. Like the the scariest music, like will be the nicest guys. Right. It's just like it's like yeah, they look scary, but like when you meet them, they're very polite. Right. It's very weird. Yeah. You know, expect them to be jerks, and they're they're not. It's just kind of funny. Right. But uh, but but yeah, it's I don't know. It's uh, you know, maybe because it was never like a a really popular high end art movement that like you know you you get friendlier because like, I think when you're popular, you tend to get a little more, uh, 
self-aware of how good you are, I guess. Uh, and like, yeah. you know, the attitudes can come along with that. Yeah, so that's it's, true. It's, it's a difficult one, but, uh, yeah. I think, you know, the catharsis aspect of it might have something to do with it as well. Like you're expressing your feelings, your, you know, your negative oh, feelings yeah. in a way that you don't have to hold them in, which makes, turns people into assholes basically when you hold in your oh, negativity. Yeah. Um, turns decent people into assholes. <laughs> so yeah. maybe it's a way to get the, get get that out as well, and and not let it turn you into an asshole. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, man, you got to get it out, man. You know, you're if if your art's real, you know, it's hopefully it's getting it out. You know, mm-hmm. right, <laughs> right. Hopefully it's got some meaning to you, not just like you want to draw something. You know, it's one thing to draw something cool, but you know, it's got to have some kind of life behind it, some Definitely. kind of attachment. You know really gets it out there yeah and, uh, it's got to have this the little magic thing it's got to have that yeah. thing that you can't put your finger on yeah yeah people and, will pick it up yep stuff, so. and that happens when it's real yeah so, and any, anyone can draw a skull but like some of them they just draw you in right and, stuff, and it's just like it's like because there's something more to it yep. yeah 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 it's amazing yeah uh okay so uh how do you do, do you have trouble running this gallery and doing your own work and doing a day job. That's kind oh, of a man. lot. It is do. a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're uh, a workaholic. So yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like my, um, my girlfriend, Sophie, she does a lot of work with it as well and stuff. I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without her and stuff. So uh-huh. like, uh, she puts in a lot of time there as well, but, um, it's just, it's just worth it to have this thing yeah, going right. on, you know, like I'm not a big party person. I don't really, go out a whole lot so it's mm-hmm. nice to to you know to have these gatherings here you know in in this space and i get to bring it all home it's, it's right <laughs> yeah. yeah it's 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 really nice to have so it's it's worth investing in yeah and, uh, but yeah and i also like my day job that's the other thing that helps and stuff if i didn't like my day job you know life would be rough yeah you know, i probably wouldn't be able to do like the whole gallery thing like uh the home gallery and stuff because yeah if you're miserable all day, it's, I can't imagine you get much work done at home, but, uh, yeah. What's your day job? I work at, uh, it's, uh, it's called Stackmore Woodworking and it's, uh, we do like high end interiors and, uh, furniture and, um, and it's, it's a really creative wood shop. It's not like, just like kind of like one of your prison style factory wood (laughs) shops and stuff. We get, we, we have like some monstrously rich, clients and they just want they just tell you to go crazy like just make me something nuts and we design it up and oh, really build these build these really bizarre interiors and How stuff cool. like really really fancy ones uh, yeah we've, we've gotten to do a lot of like really creative work it's it's been a lot of fun it's yeah it's not boring work that's the best thing about it and what, uh just what, what do you do specifically there um well i started out woodworking and then like uh the jobs just started getting too big for us. So I went into full-time design work with them and, uh, just designing interiors. And, uh, for a while there, like one of my things was, uh, man, these clients are rich They're So they're always kind of weird. They're friendly, which is weird too, but they're, but, um, <laughs> Hey, you know, you know what? I've met enough rich people <laughs> yeah. to where rich, there's a lot of really amazing, cool, rich people. You know, it's yeah, like they're just they're just friendly, and I like I know I'm working for them, but it's like they don't have to be friendly, you know, right? You know right. I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> there, there's like... the, the, not all rich people are assholes. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I've met plenty yeah. that are really great okay. people. <laughs> but, uh, it's just it's just a strange thing. You know? mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, like uh, you know, you can do like a a CAD drawing of like this interior you're gonna build in their house, and they can't look at a two dimensional thing like that. So I was literally like just doing pencil renderings of these interiors of what we plan to do yeah. to their house with like some of the elements that are in like, you know, if it's a living room, it's like I'll draw some of the elements that are in that living room as well. Uh-huh. And stuff. And um, yeah. And it's like, they just got a kick out of that because they can't just look at like a, a CAD like line. Right. Line. Yeah. You know, they have to, seeing it fully pencil rendered. I think, you know, they just get a kick out of seeing it almost like realized yeah, like that a yeah, little better. Yeah. yeah so, so, so is that kind of what you, you mainly do is sort of, uh, like design. Yeah. Design. That was, it. And... that was it for a while and stuff. And like, uh, we had like a huge project in, uh, Palm beach, Florida, 
and uh, this client bought this like historic shell and uh, of a building that was like you know barely had a floor in it and stuff but um, we had to build it up from scratch and it was work that was way too big for us so we had to hire crews to do all the construction and stuff and then we come in and we do all the final touches which is all the artsy stuff which is great oh cool and um and it it t- it ended up being like just a like gilded age mansion it's just beautiful wow we did so much crazy work in there and um i was doing like um just like hand painted like cabinets and stuff and like uh we were doing like we designed all the hardware and it's all made out of brass and it's got like cabochons and the handles it's super fancy wow. like uh I would design this stuff up and they would get sculpted and then they'd get like poured and like they'd show up and it was like all real. It's crazy. Wow. You know? But it was so just cool. epic. You know, I designed the plaster ceilings, you know, designed the floor patterns. Wow. Like, and it was just like beautiful. It was, it was amazing to see it happen because right. these people have the budget to make it happen. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's just epic. But, uh, but yeah, it's like I do woodworking and then I do design work when we need that and stuff, depending on the job. So you do what you know how to do woodworking? Like, yeah. Yep. That's crazy. How, yeah, yeah. How did you how did you get this job? How did you learn how to do woodworking? I mean, did this something you learned on the job or did you always well, it was, do it, it or It was from uh it was from my touring days like, you know, cuz I would I'd be gone for like a month at a time, so it's like it was hard to keep jobs, so I would I would just get construction jobs and renovation jobs and um because they're, you know, people are on and off of that stuff all the time. Anyways, right. it's hard to find reliable workers. So I would literally just like work for two weeks and then go back out on the road and be gone for like, you know, a month and a half and come back and try and find a job for like a couple of weeks or something before I went back out again. And, uh, it was crazy. And it's wow. just, once you've done some of that work, you can keep doing it. And, and, uh, it's great work to have, you know, because, you're not in a uniform. You're not doing freaking right. customer service. You're not serving at a restaurant or something god awful. Yeah, you're not sitting at you a know, desk, desk all no. day behind a computer. And oh man, yeah. So it, you know, it's kind of nice. And like the practical skills you get out of it is amazing. You know, yeah. Like once you've worked construction and stuff, and you know how tools work, man, you can just you can do anything. Right. You, know, you can build all your own stuff, and it's great being an artist because you you know you have to build frames, you have to build structures for things. Like mm-hmm. you know, it's it's just a great thing to be able to do. But I've always done that kind of that kind of work. So, ha, nice. so how'd you get the job at the place? Oh, that was through friends. Like, uh, I got to meet up with these people, and like, uh, I just bugged them for a while. But I was still kind of touring, and like, they're such a small crew that like, uh, I got hired like maybe a year after I'd lived up here in Philly, and like, I've worked there like ever since. Wow. So yeah, it's the longest job I've ever had. It's crazy. Is it? Is it like a? Uh... 40 hour a week kind of job or is it like a per yeah oh okay yeah 40 hour work week so that's cool yeah it, it's a little bit crazy it's like you know i work all day then i come home and i work at night and stuff and yeah <laughs> things like that it's yeah i don't know how to do it but uh <laughs> but it, it works like i don't know what else i would do i don't remember what i used to do when i had a social life it's like yeah right well oh, this place is still around uh <laughs> Yeah, it's very weird, but uh, I have a tendency to work like while like the TV's going. Yeah. So I've watched about every bad TV show there is because it's just on in the background. Yeah, same here. And That's how I've seen I usually, every documentary known to man. It's because I usually can't remember them later, but like I definitely <laughs> had it on while I was working. Right. <laughs> so that's like kind of my break. It's like, oh, I'll watch this while I work since I worked all day, and it's right. just like, yeah. I yeah. do the same thing, that's man. Like, I have a TV yeah. right next to my easel. Yeah, man. I just kind of listen to <laughs> movies and stuff while I paint. Oh, uh, totally, man. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's not bad. It's but I, I like it. I like to you know, I like the job. If I didn't like the job, it'd be much harder to do. Right. Stuff. So, yeah. So oof. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So I mean, are you working on um, your personal work when you get home? I mean, I'm trying to figure out how you split this all up, like. Because <laughs> that's kind of a it seems like a lot. It seems it is, like a lot. And, uh, like when are you doing? Do you do you do you give yourself time to just I'm gonna create my work and, and whatever I want, or is it like? Oh, that's that's the that's the drawback to it is I'm I'm so busy all the time that like uh, I don't really get a chance to like really experiment right, on things like yeah. you know like like um 
Like I'm trying to get into other, I'm, I'm like trying to get into sculpture real bad and stuff. And, I was uh, thinking that I was thinking, um, you're just, when you were talking about how you liked, you always have to be like fidgeting and, or drawing and you can't sit still. I was thinking, yeah. you know, clay in your hands. I mean, I've been playing with, you know, these little pieces of clay right here the whole time. I always, my yeah. wife's always bitching at me because I've got little balls of clay all over the house because I always have to have, you know, clay yeah, in my great. hands and it feels so good to, to, to play with. And it's really fun to, to sculpt too. You know, yeah. I don't know if you've done much of it, but I've been playing with it. Like, uh, it's like, great, uh, man. I'm trying to do like architectural elements for like the gallery right. space. Oh, stuff cool. Cause because it's uh the hallways and stuff are pretty plain mm -hmm. and stuff and uh so i'm trying to make it a little more epic and interesting stuff so like i've made like this whole like uh, uh ceiling tile system that we did out of wood and stuff and now i'm doing like a plaster cove but it's like full of these like snakes and i've ah. made these like owl corbels and stuff and it's the first time i've ever like done like the molding and casting so you're molding and have you done <laughs> that or are you planning on yeah doing it? i've done it twice it's worked out so far wow so stuff. so like it's been good that's yeah it's it's fun right yeah man I sculpting love it. and molding like, and casting it's great it's so much fun yeah this past summer it's like i, I like uh i got to a point where i've i finished all my deadlines up to a point and i was like i was like all right i'm just gonna be gone in this other room and i'm just gonna work on <laughs> sculpture stuff and just start diving into it and i was like i have this idea it's practical i need it for the right. gallery space it's got to do this and uh and it's worked out really well so uh, yeah, I made like these little like owl corbels, and it's uh, and it's just like this two foot stretches of this like plaster cove, and then there's like an an owl corbel in between each one, and it's just this repeat pattern that goes all along the hallways upstairs. And um, that's so cool. Yeah, I've, I've put up like a section of it, like a good corner, to see how it all works, and it works good. So so it's successful. I, now I just have to mash produce it and keep it going now. So so would you make the okay? first what what kind of clay did you use second what did you make the mold out of and third what are you casting in that yeah mold? well um i was asking around and uh my friend margaret uh works with uh guar and uh, uh -huh. i was asking what she works with and she uses like like i needed something cheap because like i'm not going to go into something expensive because uh it might not work out and right then i spent all this stuff so like uh she does a lot of stuff with like uh wet clay yeah, wet clay's the, clay? the best, man. It's the man, best. Man, and that's what I've been working. And it's been good. It's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's super simple to work with. It's like easy cleanup and stuff. And, right. Um, and and, and as it gets hard, did you do the thing where you let it like kind of dry out? Not dry, but mm -hmm. firm up to where you can carve yeah. in detail later. And it's almost like a waxy in a way when you get when it gets if you let it get like if you let enough moisture get out of it, it becomes like almost like a hard oil-based clay for detail yeah. stuff. It's it's so no, amazing. And then you can just spray water on it and reactivate it again. Yeah, no, that's what I love about it because it's like, um, yeah, I've always been an outsider. Like, I know there's a million different things you can use. So I asked her, and she uses that, and she does epic stuff. So yeah, it's like, that's what right, the movies use and everything. Yeah. That's what we use, yeah, for a lot of big, for big sculptures, suits and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's cheap and easy. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, just using that wet clay and, like, and uh, experimenting with that and like, you know, it dries out too much. It cracks. Yeah. Things yep. like that. But, um, got to keep it, a wet, it was, it was super easy. You got to keep plastic but, uh, bag over it or yeah, wet yeah. towels or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, then I, I just went to smooth on to try out some like smooth on's great, man. And stuff. And it was, it was good. I'm sure there's probably like more practical, cheaper things, but like it, you know, I wasn't, I only needed to do this couple of things. And how stuff, big, so how like, big was it? Um, Let's see. The owls are probably about like, I think they're like seven and a half inches wide by like maybe like six inches tall. Okay. Or so, and but they're like three dimensional owls. Right. And um and then the cove is like, it's a uh, five inches tall, but it's like twenty four inches wide. Okay. And it's a cove, and uh, so it goes down to like a quarter inch thickness. So it's like, that's oh, wow. that's that's my beginner's mistake, which right, worked yeah. fine, but it's like. You know, my first couple of pulls, I was like, man, I keep breaking this shit. Right. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's because I made it so freaking thin. Right. But. Uh, I think I lost you here. Can you hear me? But. Uh, oh, I lost you. Yeah, for a I built the huh? form out of wood. Hello? You there now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're yep. back. Yeah, you're you, yeah, 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 you reconnected. Oh, okay. okay, so you. Oh, okay. Last I heard, you said it was too thin. 
uh, you're you're breaking your poles. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's I just had to figure out how to do it. And stuff. Right. And it's like I just built like I built my jig a little too uh, too thin, but it I've got it to where it works now and stuff. So it was a few like a little bit of trial and error at the beginning, but have to recast it. Right. But uh, so you did with, you did with, a, with like Coves, a, just, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no. Well, I, you know, like like um, I built the cove out of wood first, and then I built the clay on top of it. Right. So when I so when I made that cast. Like it was at the face of the cove, so it's basically like a curved top when you look at the thing pulled out. Right. And then I had to build like a wooden jig that's basically like a forty-five degree angle that you pull with like a squeegee almost, like a scraper right. to build that back, that back forty-five angle. Oh, I see. Yeah. And um, mm. and I learned that from freaking YouTube videos. Otherwise, I would have done that the freaking hard way. And, yeah. But it totally works, you know. So, uh, but it's coming out good. I've like I, I've got like a good like five foot section with like a corner. So like the, the miter looks really nice in the plaster and it's got these like snakes and all those plants and stuff. And it's just like cool. Cause it's like kind of like a, a classic style, like a right. plaster cove, but then it's got like these like creepy critters in there and stuff. It's great. So you did it, you did like a, a silicone brush up mold. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I just brushed it on and, uh, I forget which one it is. It's one of the smooth on ones. Uh, yeah. yeah I don't know, but I just had to kind of build kinds. it on. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's like that's something else I like, you know, like through trial and error, I'll find better ones mm-hmm. that work with better things because I want to do like more of that. I want to do, you know, like the little owl cord ended up being like a four part mold right. and stuff. And uh, and it, it's it works for what it is, but because it's for me, but it's, you know, it's a little more pain in the ass. If you're a professional, you'd have built it a little differently. Right. Yeah, stuff, it works. It works for me because it's mine. Yeah. 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 But, uh, and then and yeah, then you're but, casting them in plaster. Yep. What what kind of plaster? Is it? Uh, right now, I've just been using just regular old um, plaster from Home Depot and oh, stuff. Okay. Because these things are small. You oh, know? Okay, it's right, like, right. I don't really have to worry about weight and stuff like that. Like I know the the hydrocal and stuff like that right, is the better yeah, way to go. Yeah. But like, you know, it's, it's like I don't need it right now. Yeah, I get into works. bigger, better things. This thing, but th- these things are pretty small to where they're going. So, you know, like the cove is long, but it's like pretty thin. Right. So so it doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it. But uh, yeah. Man, it's it's just been an adventure, like working with that stuff. Yeah, oh, man, it's the best. Yeah, it's so yeah. much fun. And it's such a break from like drawing all the time. Yeah, right. It's like so nice. It's like I've needed that for so long. Yeah, right. Like, to get into something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine, um, a sculptor friend of mine, who I worked with for years, Mitch Devane, he used to always mm-hmm. tell me um, he thought sculpture was easier than painting. Uh, representation representational painting because you don't have to deal with perspective or value or color or the illusion of depth you know what i mean you don't have, well you might have to maybe with like a, a relief type sculpture but the cool thing about sculpture it's kind of like it is it, it's it is the thing that it is you don't have to make it look like it's round you don't have to paint yes. figure out how the shadow is going to go or where the yep. light source is from it's just there right in front of you. And so it's like all these other variables are kind of taken out of it. Yeah. You know, it's crazy, but it, it but it's funny. I've seen some sculptures that look so good unpainted. And then when they're painted, it's like, Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it's, it's goofy looking now, but right. like, uh, it's just funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It is what? a very different way to think like, like working three dimensionally. Yeah. Man, I was just dying to do that. Man. Yeah. Just I, to work differently. See if I could, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. So. You'll you'll if you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed that, you'll you'll love it because it just gets more and more fun the more you uh, learn how to do different things and um yeah make some gargoyles man make some gargoyles oh, for that place oh totally yeah it's like I want <laughs> you know it's like I want to I want it to look like it's somewhat like uh you know like it's supposed to be there you know like right. kind of a classic look to it but it's like it's still got to be mine right. so it's got to have my kind of critters and different things yeah. in there. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you could, uh, oh, yeah, man. you could, yeah. you could sell some of that stuff at your in your gift shop. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something to move to eventually. Is like something I can mass produce. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. That's the other cool thing about malls is you can uh, make make duplicates and do all that. You know, it's awesome. Hell yeah! The other cool yeah. thing about sculpting is you can sculpt your reference. Oh man, no doubt. And then like, take I've always photos seen artists and, do that. Yeah, yeah. They make little maquettes or whatever yep. and like photograph and I'm like, man, 
that's that's just fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can do that if you can sculpt, you can do that, and it's great. I mean, it's I think it's good for um, uh, painters and people yeah. people who work in two D because it, you, you know you get you get used to how you know lights cast hitting things and I don't know when you're holding it and you're forming it yourself it really I don't know I think it translates into your two-dimensional work yeah no it's it's definitely it's it's a workout for the brain no matter what yeah you know, right. for an artist like to to switch a medium like that and like think differently yeah man <laughs> yeah every artist should do it at some point I can yeah yeah so uh you did a lot of sculpting uh, back in the for movies and stuff. Was that what you were doing back then? Yeah. Or yeah. I did that, that for like 20 years. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. That's amazing. It was crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah. Cause I mean, was I've seen some of the fun. like frames and things that you do nowadays and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that cool stuff is old stuff. Yeah. Well, um, you watch the blob or dark man or <laughs> all these old movies oh, from the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> that's where you see most of it. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was cool. I mean, it was that was a great job. Just you know, going into work and sculpt sculpting monsters that had to look really realistic and great. Forty hours a week. I mean, that's pretty great. Yeah, that's that sounds pretty great. <laughs> but that, but but the yeah, but uh, but I but it but after twenty years, it 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 wasn't. You know, it's like it's yeah. it started. You know, it started. Um, I don't know. You get you, being art directed and all all the political stuff and having to make lame designs because you know the the accountant who is oh, one of the producers geez. has to put their two cents in. It's like that was kind of ever, uh, off. It occurred often. Um, I believe it, man. So yeah, that, that's hard, man. It's hard yeah. to do. It, be, it becomes just like commercial, just commercial art and your pair of hands. And so that's was the main thing. That was the main issue for me is I wasn't getting to do my own thing. Or uh, when I did get yeah. to do my own thing, they would change it and make it, you know, <laughs> lame. Or they would cut it out. Yep. Cut cut the whole thing out. I spent. Wow. I did uh, for Men in Black too. I did this really cool alien that ended up being in Men in Black Three. But what? I spent all this time, you know, that was my job on Men in Black yeah. 2 is I got to design, sculpt, paint, art direct this this alien. And they just didn't use it. <laughs> they just Man. didn't use it. It was like they never even shot it. It's because oh, it's so brutal. It had like, you know, the arms were like this. Uh-huh. It's like he had like gloves, like you know, like creature suit gloves, like so these mo- yeah. alien hands, and then the arms kind of went like that and back, and then it was a suit, and then this is all green screened his head, yeah, and it kind of went down like this, and his face was where his pelvis, the face was on the pelvis, <laughs> so the idea was, and then the legs were like that too, like it, it went down on the actor's thigh, and then it, and it, no one's hearing this is going to understand what I'm talking about, but yeah. maybe I'll, I'll find a picture and try and post it on the Patreon. Yeah, yeah. But uh, right about the knees, the leg went out and, you know, uh-huh. weird. And then back down into the foot to where the actor had the foot. So then like yeah. the lower legs, green screen removal, the yeah. forearm got was supposed mm-hmm. to get green screened out his head and his center was supposed to get green screened out so and it was amazing we did tests it looked so cool it was yeah. before, and it was you know it was before everybody was doing that it, you know men in black 2 was you know not 90s i think late 90s God. or something so not everybody was doing this whole green screen removal thing that's yeah. so common so i was all excited about this thing and it was just a background alien and they brought it on set and so they started they got the actor dressed up he started walking on set and then they're like Oh, no, 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 we can't, you know, that has to be uh, shot on a green screen. It has to be composited later. It's like, okay, take the stuff off. And then they just never shot it again. But geez. then, but luckily, uh, like I said, a Men in, Black, Men in Black 3, it got, they did use it because it was in storage that all, for years. So they just pulled it back out and then shot it right. And it's in the movie. So That's so crazy. I know. Do they have to call you and like, how does this thing work? Like, yeah, that's no, that's a yeah, that's a good question. I don't. Yeah, yeah. They they may have. I don't. I don't think so though. I don't think so. <laughs> I think the guy who ran the shop kind of was. 
you knew how, how it all worked, but yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's just like, yeah, that figures. there's a lot of, um, yeah, so much waste in the movie business. It's crazy how much money they spend on stuff that just doesn't Man, get I believe used. It. Yeah. Man. Kind of yeah, amazing. Guess, that's the same thing with my woodshop job. If it wasn't like a, as creative as it is, like, I don't think I'd have been able to stick with it as long as I have. Either. Right. And stuff, you know? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we've done a few jobs. It's just like a closet or a kitchen, and it is painfully boring. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, really? It's like, oh, man. Yeah, it's it's just grim days when you have to do something super basic. Yeah, right, like, oh, right. Man, not into it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I, I remember those when you know you get something like that in a film job, where it's like uh, you're cleaning up a life cast or something boring and simple and tedious, and you just you know those are the days you get an audio book or. Yep. You know, and just, let, just go into the zone in your headphones and just get in your own little world and zone out, you know. <laughs> but. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> My God. But, uh, but yeah. uh, well, um, what do you, what are your, do you have any, like, big plans for for your career, your artistic career, or um, the convent, or do you have anything coming up that you're prepared pre- preparing for or any big plans or anything yeah i got a bunch of odds things. i don't know i never i never like think like really far into the future mm-hmm. like but uh things just go as they go it's kind of nice but yeah uh, but uh yeah the gallery we've got we've got a number of shows set up for this year it's gonna be fun and uh i've got it we're closed for a couple of months because i'm trying to finish this renovated renovating these hallway ceilings with that sculpture work i want to finish that right. stuff up and get that mess out of there and stuff but uh but I've got a I've got a few other stuff. I was like I've been working with this uh, Cadaver Records company for a while now, and uh, just doing like kind of horror audiobooks, like H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe stuff, and it's cool. It's been rad. Like we did that Beyond record I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm working on this big. Uh, oh man, it's, it's huge. It's like a six record like box set of the Mountains of Madness. Oh, cool and stuff like Lovecraft. Oh man, that sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> man, it it is. There's so much to work with. In yeah, that. it's crazy. But um, but it's got to be six records, so it's like one big image that gets divided into six records. So oh, it's, it's crazy. It's like so I have to do this huge painting that's like you know six record covers, and uh, yeah, and I just have to mass it out with like as much imagery as possible and stuff. And that I never worked that big, so that's that's a big crazy project. I'm trying to finish up now. Yeah, stuff. But uh, how big but, is what? How big is the? It's a uh, twenty-four by thirty-six. And stuff. Oh, so that's that is big for you. Yeah, that's like three of my monster pieces. <laughs> so, so it's a it's a big one, but it's it's a lot of fun. Now, do but, you uh, do you get to keep the original? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. The original is always mine. That's stuff. great. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I sell the originals. You'll be able to sell that sometimes one for sure. Do. Yeah. HP Lovecraft, yeah, yeah. come on. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's big, did, uh, so it'll go for a good price too. That's cool, man. And uh. Oh, uh, was it? Um, I'm trying to remember. God, there's so much stuff going on. Yeah, I've got some other record covers I'm working on. It's Ben Valkyrie from Virginia. They're really good. Uh, trying to finish that up. And uh, I got some shows with like, there's a local show, uh, uh, Paradigm Gallery, that I've got a show with in a couple months. Uh, what was it? Oh, MondoCon down in Austin. Mm-hmm. That's always a fun show. I don't know that yeah. one. Yeah, that, that one's pretty cool because it's like uh, Mondo. That, um, what is it? They do uh, they do more like pop culture, like they do like movie like soundtracks and different things like that, and like post. They mostly do posters for like movies. Oh, usually, oh, af- okay. usually after the fact. And right, stuff, and right, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I've seen those. They hire a lot of artists and stuff, yep. and they have like uh, it's part of I think it's like Austin Fest or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. That's uh, every summer in Austin. They usually have this art show where they have like all these artists do these things. It's like my excuse to kind of do like pop culture references, like from movies and stuff. Right. So I never do that. So it's like, that's kind of fun. I have to like think of some like characters from movies that I really like and try and make a piece of my own out of that. Right, so yeah. it's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty neat, but that's cool. And, uh, yeah, I've got a solo show in uh, October down in uh, Virginia at uh, second street gallery. That'll be fun. Oh, so, cool. So, yeah. So I'm gearing up for that. That's a big one. You got a lot going on, man. <laughs> it's a yeah, lot. man, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. 
uh, it's, I try not to look at it all at once. Right. And stuff. It's yeah, like I know. It's like I have it kind of scheduled out. If I can just keep it rolling in that direction, <laughs> it'll be fine. But yeah. Good but, thing uh, you're a workaholic. God, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really sleep much, so like it works out that way and stuff. But uh, yeah, I just put out this tarot deck too. Oh, that's which, right. I was going to ask nuts. you about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, you did. You did the whole a whole tarot deck. Holy shit! Yeah, all seventy eight, <laughs> all seventy eight cards. Wow, and, uh, it was nuts, and uh, it's doing really well. I'm I'm really happy about that. But it, it was for a U.S. game system, which is cool because it was like I'd always like talked about wanting to do a tarot card deck, uh-huh. and like I've always used symbolism from tarot card decks because they're they're fascinating. They're so full of symbols already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stuff. right. So it's so it's easy to pick from and do stuff. And uh, and one day I just got a call from U.S. Game Systems about doing a deck. And I was like, you know, and they were literally like, I really like this painting you did and this painting you did. And I was like, oh, cool. If I can use old work too, that'll be great and stuff. And uh, I tried to use as much old work as possible and it maybe accounted for like seven cards right. out of 78. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I, I like worked nonstop for like two years on that project. Yeah, I can imagine. That's yeah. crazy. But it, it came out good and people were liking it. You know, I haven't offended like serious tarot people which right. is nice because oh, i was good. waiting for that you know yep. but like because uh, <laughs> uh because i really like redid the thing like i didn't just i didn't want to just redraw the same old imagery everybody does mm-hmm. and stuff that seemed really boring so like i i tried to make it my own and like uh i used the basic concept of each card but like redid the artwork with like my own work and my own imagery and stuff cool. and uh did a crossover of that and it's, it's worked out really well people really taken to it it's just exciting where's where, uh, where is it available i mean it's is it for it's sale right now or freaking amazon like it's nuts it's everywhere wow cool yeah because it's because it's u.s game systems it's like um all those uh all those stores that sell tarot cards like mm-hmm. tourist shops and stuff like that it's 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 that company and stuff so it's it was like kind of like a a huge deal it was well, how do you amazing. search it is it do you just jeremy hush and tarot deck and it'll come up it, yeah, it's called the Hush Tarot. Ah, the Hush and, uh, Tarot. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. kind of works. Yeah, that yeah kinda they, works. they named it, and I was like, all right. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. And, uh, yeah, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's done really well. It's uh, it's exciting, and it's and it's and it's nice to see it all together because it was, like, an insane amount of work, and, like, I don't remember half of it, I swear. Right. I was like, I flipped through it, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, now I remember, but holy cow, because it was so much work, <laughs> and it was just like – any kind of show I had to do, like it had to work with this deck and stuff. It was like every little thing, like right. I had to work with this deck too. Right, right. It was like I couldn't really get it. I couldn't really deviate from that plan, and it, it worked out. So it just came out this past month, and it's doing pretty well. But yeah. the packaging's all super nice and stuff, and like it's yeah, it's just exciting. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, can't wait to see it. I'm gonna check that out. Um, well, shit, we're like coming up on, you know, over an hour and a half. So like, um, we're at like an hour 40, I think right now. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That was, see, it was kind of easy, right? That wasn't that, yeah, yeah. that wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> time flies. <laughs> Everybody says yeah. that. I think I, I have access to some time portal. This podcast, the, the Skype somehow shrinks yeah, time no or something. So it's like I don't know what to talk about. I just like to draw. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. If we if we were good at talking, we wouldn't be <laughs> artists drawing shit all the time. I don't yeah, know no how doubt. the hell I got in this position, but um, <laughs> you know, for, oh yeah, forced me to forced me to learn how to speak. Um, well, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. It's very interesting to hear about your your life and career and all the stuff you're doing and. Um, but you, you you'll have to send me all your links promotional links because i mean people are gonna definitely want to see uh the convent philly so but i mean just i'll have that stuff in the description but if you can just tell me um yeah. right now what the what the addresses are for people that don't want to look in the description um what are, what are yeah. some of the social well, media um, links with social media if you just look up the convent philly it'll come up on about anything so, oh, okay okay yeah, it's that easy and uh the same with me. If you just look up Jeremy Hush, like I'll I'll come up on everything. It works. It works pretty well that way. Well, that's easy. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a good thing about social media. So. 
Right, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, unless you're using a weird fake name and stuff, then you, then it gets complicated. Right, yeah, so, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was telling someone the other day, that's the only that's the only real benefit about being a well-known artist is that you can just, like, Google your own images to when you want to show someone, oh, this painting I did, and you can Google it and it comes up. That's like, yeah, you know, that's like the main benefit, really. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I, I, I bug people that use like weird fake names mm-hmm. or like cool names like on uh, online. I was like, you got to be consistent. It's got to be on every everything you use. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. Or it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, you just make yourself impossible to find. Yeah, exactly. You got to make things easy for people. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily you got a cool name, so it works. It works out all right. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks again for, for coming on the show, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, I love your work. Love, Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, so people check out his stuff. Check out the links in the in the description. And um, if you want to join the Patreon, the Dark Art Society Patreon, it's patreon.com slash darkartsociety. I'm starting to post a little bit more content in there i got i got a screen grab of jeremy if you want to see what he looks like you can join for as little as a dollar a month for that privilege and support yes. <laughs> support the dark art community um so yeah uh that's it so thanks jeremy i appreciate it it was fun talking to you yeah so, thanks so much say goodbye to everybody goodbye see everybody you guys. <laughs> Have a- bye